It is my honor to utter the four most powerful words ever spoken in a democracy. The people have spoken. Yes, they have. And thank God they rejected Herschel Walker. I'm definitely relieved. And it was close, but Warnock still pulled off the dub. He won by 2.8 percentage points. And thankfully, Herschel Walker has conceded. Here's just a snippet of his speech. But I want to say that I want to thank all of you as well, because we've had a tough journey, have we not? But one of the things I said is they, when they called the race, I said the numbers doesn't look like they're going to add up. But one of the things I want to tell all of you is you never stop dreaming. I don't want any of you to stop dreaming. I don't want any of you to stop believing in America. I want you to believe in America and continue to believe in the Constitution and believe in our elected officials most of all. Continue to pray for them because all the prayers you've given me, I felt those prayers. I want to thank all my team as well, Team Herschel, because they put up with a lot. And I want to thank Team Herschel. Thank all my donors as well because you guys without you i couldn't have done what i've done so i want to thank all of you as well because there's no excuses in life and i'm not going to make any excuses now because we put up one heck of a fight and that my friends is hopefully the last time we'll have to hear from herschel walker at least for a while because the thought of him being in the senate for six years after just covering him for like six months has been absolutely draining <laughs> so the thought of him not being in the public sphere it is very, very encouraging to see. Now, this is significant not just because Herschel Walker lost, but because Joe Manchin, at least in the Senate, is no longer a power broker. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that Democrats are going to be better positioned to pass policies because Republicans have taken control of the House. But at least this ends Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema's reign because they no longer have to rely on him to have the majority. Now, what's interesting to me is the response from the right. It seemed as if all signs were pointing to Herschel Walker losing this race, but still they were very surprised and really bitter. So let's get to the right wing coat. My favorite is probably this tweet from Laverne Spicer, who wrote, Herschel Walker is about to win. And then she, she followed up by saying, they weren't going to let Warnock lose because he's their plan for 2028. Mark it down. Hilarious. And Charlie Kirk also sounded off on his show because he was very disappointed with Republicans because they didn't turn out to vote in high enough numbers, largely because, well, they thought it was rigged. It's interesting. I actually assumed incorrectly that if you take time to watch this program, thank you, that you would also just automatically vote. Turns out there's a fair portion of you that are completely done and that are willing to voice that opinion. Do we have that Laura Ingram clip? that we guys pulled. And I just want to say, I do sympathize with being upset with the Republican Party and not totally trusting the system, but not participating at all guarantees the other side to be able to play games. And if everything was broken and lost, how did we win the House of Representatives? If everything is broken and lost, how did Ron Johnson, who stood up against the pharmaceutical company, win in Wisconsin? If everything was broken and lost, how did Ron DeSantis win by 17 votes? How did we win the House by getting wins in California and New York? We won the House through Oregon, California, and New York. I'm not, I, this, I was in the movie 2000 Mules. I sympathize with all of the sentiment. Thoughts, actually, are not as important. You can have very angry thoughts towards the system. It is actions that I will instead address. You could say, oh, this system is corrupt. It's terrible. I'm going to go vote. Fine. You've done the right thing. You have not allowed your thoughts to manifest into what I would consider to be an immoral action. Someone says, Charlie, I thought... I thought you were kidding when you said people weren't voting until you read these emails. No, you should see. I'm reading them on air. And by the way, I'm tweeting out some of these emails so you could see them yourself, ourselves. The MAGA movement is committing suicide in front of our very eyes because of, and if you extrapolate that, that means there, and we see it in the numbers, we see it in the data, millions of people that have said we are no longer going to vote because of cynicism. And if you... If you look at 
the sentiment. I share the sentiment, by the way. When I went and voted in Arizona, I even said, boy, I hope this counts. The MAGA movement is committing suicide before our very eyes. Charlie, I don't know why you're surprised by this. You told them that elections were rigged and that votes didn't matter. So the logical conclusion after you learn that is, well, what's the point of voting? Why stand in line for hours when it's not going to amount to anything, when my vote isn't going to affect change? You did this, so you have yourself to thank for this. And I love the logic here that he tries to uh, to squeeze in. Oh, well, not participating guarantees the other side wins. Right, but if you've already told your audience that your vote doesn't matter because they just make up votes or they steal it, why would you voting contribute when the system itself is entirely delegitimized? Like, it's shocking to me that he's so surprised that him telling his supporters that voting doesn't matter because the system is rigged would backfire and hurt Republicans. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't say that in particular, but she's still angry. And specifically, she's insulted, according to her, by the Herschel Walker campaign, and she takes some shots at GOP leaders. Well, let me lay this out real clear for everyone to understand, and this is especially for the campaign consultants with the 30,000 foot view where they look down on Georgia and arrogantly think they know how to win races in our state. This is for Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and the rest of the Republican senators. You guys are the reasons why we are losing Republican races all over the country. And this is your third loss in my home state. So let me inform you on behalf of Georgia, this is your third strike and you're out. You don't belong in our state running key races anymore. No, thank you. We don't want your help. Let me let you know something, Steve. I was never asked very often by the Herschel Walker campaign to come speak at any of his campaign events. They only asked me to come to maybe two, I think, two or three in my own district when he was campaigning um, all over the state running for Senate. But they only asked me a couple of times in my own district, which I find extremely insulting. But the audacity and, and really the frank rudeness of the campaign consultants and Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham, where they thought, you know, we're going to keep Marjorie Taylor Greene away from Herschel Walker, and, and we don't need her voice at his campaign rallies and events um, where we're campaigning all of this all over the state, I think is a really major mistake and an insult to me and an insult to, our, to, to people who support me and Republicans all over Georgia, because I don't have a popularity problem in my home state. Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham do. And they're, they, these consultants, they've lost plenty of times and they, they really, no one should hire them again. And the, the millions of dollars that they've made off of these campaigns, they should give it back to Republican donors for wasting their money. And that's exactly how I feel about it. That Senate seat was extremely important, important to not only Georgia, but important to the entire country. And here's another thing. They told President Trump to stay out of Georgia. That was another major mistake. And then the same fools are out there running around trying to blame President Trump today. Well, they should have invited him to Georgia to campaign with Herschel Walker. They should have invited me to campaign with Herschel Walker more because I'm the only Republican woman elected from the state of Georgia on a federal level. So on one hand, I'm thankful that she's not claiming that the election was stolen at least. So progress, right? Credit where it's due. But I love that she believes that in the event she was utilized by the Herschel Walker campaign, she would have won. She lives in a very, very deep red district. How is that going to help him win a statewide race. And furthermore, she claims that uh, GOP operatives and leaders told Trump to stay out of Georgia. He's toxic. He is toxic. He's seen by a lot of people as a loser. So I think that that was actually a good decision. Now she says, look, um, I don't have a popularity problem in my home state. Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham do. And that may be correct, but still, this is a statewide race. So you going on stage and foaming at the mouth doing fascist things, talking about queer people as if they're butchering children, isn't going to help Herschel Walker. And yes, he did engage in transphobia, and he used a lot of far-right rhetoric, but the difference is that I don't think he understands what he's saying, whereas you know how despicable the things that you're saying 
is. So overall, whenever there's a loss, there's going to be right wing cope. And I am right there to drink up their salty tears because I find them absolutely delicious. Now, I want to give Christian Walker, who is Herschel Walker's son, the last laugh because I think he bravely spoke out against his own father. And now he's kind of spilling the tea on what led to his father's run in the first place. And I find this fascinating. So he writes via Twitter, the truth. Trump called my dad for months demanding that he run. Everyone with a brain begged him, please don't do this. This is too dirty. You have an insane past. Please don't do this. We got the middle finger. He ran. He adds, Republicans, we say we don't play identity politics. And then you ran this man mainly because he was the same skin color as his opponent with no background other than football. A boring old Republican could have won. He continues, don't beat women, hold guns to people's heads, fund abortions, then pretend you're pro-life life, stock cheerleaders, leave your multiple minor children alone to chase more fame, lie, 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 say stupid crap and make a fool of your family, and then maybe you can win a Senate seat. Don't compare Warnock running over his wife's foot to my father holding guns and knives to my mother's throat, threatening to kill his therapist, her, and one of his adulteresses in a therapy session, and telling my mom and I he was going to beat our asses. Get off my page. Now he concludes by saying, this is my amazing mom who's had her name and image dragged through the media unwillingly. She refused to talk to any journalist after 18 months of stalking. I blew up after she was lied on multiple times. Shout out to every strong mother whose story goes untold. We love you. So listen, I'll say this. I vehemently disagree with the policy positions of Christian Walker and a lot of the rhetoric that he uses, but because he had the courage to denounce his own father, He's earned at least a little bit more respect from me because it takes guts to do that. And him saying that Trump was the one who begged Herschel Walker confirms that this is another L that rests squarely on Trump's shoulders. More reason for the Republican Party to distance themselves from Donald Trump. So there you have it, folks. I'm feeling really optimistic because... We're not going to have this insanely violent, hypocrite, far-right Republican in the U.S. Senate. And that doesn't necessarily mean that a lot will be accomplished in the next couple of years since Republicans do control the House of Representatives. I mean, when Democrats were in control of both chambers, not much was accomplished. But still, to see that somebody didn't fail to the top again gives me a little bit of hope. Not a lot but a little bit of hope. So I'm absolutely happy about the results. And I hope that you are too. I've got a little bit of extra pep in my step knowing that Herschel Walker is not going to be a United States Senator. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician.